Hello, my name is Joshua and I live in London, England and I'm eight years old and I really wish you would watch churchmilitant.tv <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris coming to you from Amsterdam in the Netherlands. On March 25th, 1945, the Feast of the Annunciation, with the bombs and guns of World War II still exploding around this capital, a local 40-year-old Dutch woman, Ida Peerdman, who is a simple, was a simple office worker, said she was visited by the Queen of Heaven in the first of a series of 56 apparitions ending in May 1959. The local bishop here in Amsterdam approved of the apparitions, which came to be known under the collective title of the Lady of All Nations, seen in this image here, which is how Ida says the Blessed Mother presented herself to her. And we are standing in front of that house right now, the now headquarters of Our Lady of All Nations. One of the supports given for the authenticity of the apparitions was a series of predictions and prophecies, one in particular which stood out at the very beginning. According to Ida, Our Lady told her in February of 1959 that the Pope, the current Pope then, Pius XII, would die in October, six months later. She says she wasn't allowed to reveal the information to anyone, but her spiritual director ordered her to write it down and give it to him under seal. She did this. Six months later, Pope Pius XII, in fact, died in early October. Her spiritual director sent this information to Rome along with the original note containing the prediction of Pius's death. Many of the predictions which are attributed to the vision include geopolitical happenings, such as the rise of communism in China, the tearing down of the Berlin Wall, and other such happenings. But one topic of the apparitions is one which has drawn the most discussion, what is termed the fifth Marian dogma, the declaration of Our Lady as co-redemptrix. This issue has caused much discussion and debate among clergy and theologians, with many supporting the idea. One of the last things, in fact, said publicly by Pope Benedict was a reference to the principles of the fifth dogma. This term excites passion among many because of the obvious problems which would arise with many and various Protestant congregations in an age that is so dedicated to the pursuit of ecumenism. Many clerics are concerned that to publicly declare Our Lady as co-redemptrix in a solemn and public fashion might set back the cause of ecumenism, which has been being so actively pursued now for decades. Nonetheless, there are many priests and bishops and religious orders anxious and waiting for this fifth Marian dogma to be declared. The four declared Marian dogmas are, of course, her Immaculate Conception, the Perpetual Virginity, her title as Mother of God, and her Assumption. That she would also be declared co-redemptrix with our Lord is seen really as nothing more than the natural outgrowth of the previous four. Now it's important to note that the use of the word or the prefix co in co-redemptrix is not meant that she is an equal to our Lord, but rather a sharer in, unequal, but nonetheless a participant, a sharer, and in her case, the chief participant. This understanding and term co-redemptrix, as well as a few other related terms, have already worked their way into much of the informal, unofficial language of the church, including, as we said, a passing reference Pope Benedict used as he was leaving office. The issue does seem to break down between more orthodox camps with a great devotion to Our Lady and those less so with more of an eye to modern slants in the church. Now, in some circles, chatter has begun as to whether Pope Francis might be the Pope who will finally at last announce and formally declare the fifth Marian dogma, owing to his own personal great devotion to the Queen of Heaven. His first formal trip after being elected to the papacy was to go to St. Mary Major in Rome. And of course, he, was, he has dedicated the world to the Queen of Heaven, having had the statue of Our Lady of Fatima brought from Fatima to the Vatican for just that express purpose last month. These are indeed very turbulent and fast-moving times in which we as a church find ourselves. There's much anxiety about affairs in the world with governments and even nature. If there was ever a time where we as Catholics needed the comfort and reassurance of our mother, this would be the time. 
Reporting to you from Amsterdam, the city of the Eucharistic miracle, this is Michael Voris for churchmilitant.tv. God love you.